Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So, you know, we were getting a lot of comments and a lot of people um, mentioning, you, is it a coincidence that you had HARP conducting tests the 8th through the 10th right before we have all the solar storms? Well, we, we did this one on Patreon. It was a Patreon exclusive. Uh, you know, answering that question from our perspective, and I know a lot of you guys probably have an inkling of what that perspective is as we look at that all-seeing eye watching everything going on. Yes, it certainly does. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we've been watching is uh, earthquake activity at this time because, again, when you have all that energy entering the earth, it increases greatly the chances of any sort of earthquakes. And this is coinciding with a time period that we've given and others uh, have given before from for various reasons, like Joni Petri, again, talking about the astrology. She's a Vedic astrologer. And saying uh, that basically the 10th through the 20th, she was very, very concerned uh, over the situation in the U.S. and some sort of attack um, that might happen in one way, shape, or form. And, of course, we have everybody uh, sharing their opinion with what some people think are just natural 12,000-year cycles. Other, th other people think it's not even a 12,000-year cycle. Others, you know, think this is technology, absolutely of very high humankind and then there's others yet that think it's technology that's not necessarily human hmm. well i definitely don't think it's black and white no i think and i think it's not necessarily just a or b or c it's a combination of the different things going on here as we've been saying you know the whole time we've had the channels going I've been watching the quakes, and you know, we, we were at 151 overnight, like in the middle of the night, and then this morning was up to 170, then it quieted down to 150 in a 24-hour period. Right now, it's starting to increase. It's at 230. As you can see, the biggest bullseye here is a 6.4. Some sources were saying this is a 6.6. .6. This is literally right on the border with Guatemala and Mexico, 75.4 kilometers deep is what they are saying. Um, this has caused some landslides, also some structural um, issues with some buildings. You can see this is literally right off the coast, right on the border. And so this is substantial. The other thing too that's interesting is just watching the earthquake patterns. Um, and, you know, there was a time when there, it was extremely quiet. There was nothing in Japan, uh, nothing in, in Kamchatka, nothing really much happening over in the Aleutians, and then very little at for a period of time in Alaska. Now it seems like things are on the upswing. Um, what we do want to look at is what looks to be a big one here, but this is actually a swarm of 40 earthquakes on the Mexico side of the border, again, uh, on s in Southern California, Mexico border area, not far from Mexicali, not too, too far from, uh, say, Yuma over here. Well, watch that. I've seen many more than 40 uh, earthquakes in this area at, at periods uh, with swarming. So you will see swarms, but at the same time, there's an awful lot of energy that's been absorbed by the Earth. And to this point in time, we haven't seen anything that would give you an idea that it's released. Uh, so be very, very aware of that. These are always interesting, but you do see these in Ethiopia, 10 kilometers deep. This one's a 4.9 is what they're calling it. It's interesting because, again, it's, it's in off of the plate. Um, but there is a, a rift, the Kenyan rift, that is forming, and scientists will tell you over millions of years, you know, that this portion of Africa right here, this little horn, is going to separate and become an island at some point in time. I think the timelines are off as far as, I think there's a lot of things that they say take millions of years to happen very suddenly, 
And then I think there are some things uh, that we have found, artifacts, for instance, that, that truly are billions of years old. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, and um, <laughs> it's it's really funny once you start getting getting uh, to understand these things. It's really truly never ending, and how this never makes it into our mainstream, I don't know. I mean, the information is out there. You don't have to look too far to get it, but you know, the mainstream definitely makes no efforts to bring expansion to anyone and you know the one thing I have been really feeling is like this water this bubbling up from the earth the the water is something very very wet and I know we're always having a lot of floods it just feels like there's going to be a little extra um, oomph thrown into it so I would like to send energy to a lot of people who are really really struggling who are getting really struck stuck and you know they're they're animals let's not forget the pets let's not forget the livestock they all rely on the humans and the humans if they're struggling you know the animals are going to struggle so this is creating a domino effect of stuff that is not not good at all so let's send our good intentions out there as you're looking at again brazil southern part of brazil closer to the border with uruguay just absolutely inundated, inundated in a record way, something nobody's ever seen in this area ever before in any of our lifetimes. Not to say that it couldn't have happened in the past, though, because, again, uh, there's a lot of evidence to mud floods, a lot of evidence to mud floods. So when you look at this, this particular area, it's one of the most prosperous Brazilian states it's known for its grain production, viticulture, ranching, and industry. So absolutely, they are targeting the food supply. And it's, it's beyond our obvious at this point in time. Yet we still have policing actions going on by X as much as uh, Elon will go and you know say and point out other areas that are being policed like youtube etc etc google it's also x with these little community post-its you know oh chemtrails are just a conspiracy theory no they're fact they've been declassified it's factual it's not even a debate anymore and when you look at what's trending is you'll see harp everywhere and you'll see c-e-r-n and, um, you know, twice now we've been making videos and had major issues when we were talking about these technologies, like we lost a video totally that was talking about uh, the Hindu god of destruction and rebirth. You know, the one that has the statue over there at CERN. Yes, because uh, I had a whole video. We did the whole video. We were just saying goodbye and we lost power and we lost the video it was corrupted the file was corrupted it's happened many many times and so this morning just when we got done with the video what went up over on patreon the power just started going on and off on and off and it was only our house uh yeah, <laughs> yeah we we checked you know and and there was only three people in our whole uh area that had power loss and and we were we're two of the three uh because we have two different power lines coming in so you know it was very very curious to say the least and people say oh you're just paranoid you're just paranoid oh yeah live uh, a few weeks in our shoes and you will see when you're talking about these things these demonic entities are very real they are very very real and you know again this is their technology we're utilizing demonic technology. We literally are. Uh, we can, of course, use it for as good as we possibly can. And you can see how bad this flooding is. This is uh, horrible. I mean, whole whole communities are being washed away. And, you know, again, people have brought up that the flooding is particularly intense in the BRICS nations. Brazil is the B in, in BRICS, by the way. Uh, interesting too uh, to watch that and wonder so is there going to be a retaliation uh, on the US maybe in an earthquake form absolutely is a possibility don't you hate it when it's one of those days 
Well, when life throws a load of bleep at you, use your intention, turn it into something positive. Here, you know, he's saying, hey, no, no, it's okay. That didn't just happen. I'm just enjoying a day at the beach. <laughs> it's just the beach. It's just the beach. But before we go, I want to ask you guys something. So since the solar flares and since the auroras, my phone is doing something very, very strange because I always put it on airplane mode uh, when it's not being utilized. And then I noticed um, I, I was texting someone this morning and I looked up and I noticed uh, my phone was on airplane mode. So I'm like, shoot, I'm going to have to resend that because I know it didn't send. And I looked at the text and sure enough, it sent just fine. And then again, this afternoon, I had it on airplane mode again. And then I, I was doing some other stuff and I was sending and receiving a text from yet another friend. It was being sent and received just fine. It's like my phone was not even on airplane mode. I was wondering if anybody else is experiencing that. It's very strange. It's like they have totally cut off. It doesn't matter if my, my phone shows the little airplane picture. That means absolutely nothing now. Absolutely nothing. Just wanted to share and see if you guys are having any of the same things going on. Well, it is the apocalypse. It's the great unveiling. And the unveiling is the fact that the technology has never really been by us and for us. It's been a way to monitor us. And we're at a point in time when we, where we are awakening. So they're going to, at some point in time, make no bones about it. And, you know, that phrase, prison planet, uh, will be very, very evident uh, to many. And at the same time, the awakening is happening. And we outnumber the control system vastly. We vastly outnumber them. They are also limited because they can't go where we can go organically. So, you know, they are very, very limited. So it's a matter of just simply taking our power back. Indeed. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.